Welcome to worship. If you're here on site, you should have received your bulletin when you came in. If you are joining us online, that bulletin is available on our website, messiahoaklandnj.org. We also email it out, so if you want to receive our weekly emails, you can either sign up on our website or contact the church office. We will be celebrating Holy Communion today. If you're here on site, you should have picked up your prepackaged communion elements, grape juice on the bottom, wafer on the top. For those of you joining us online, you are more than welcome to join us at God's table for Holy Communion using whatever bread, wine, crackers, or grape juice that you have at home. Lastly, as is our summer tradition, our prayer petitions are just that. They are open-ended petitions. And you are invited to share your prayers either out loud or silently on your hearts. I invite you to please stand or join in a worship position. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who greets us in this and every season, whose word never fails, whose promise is sure. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of our neighbors. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned, we have hurt our community, we have squandered your blessings, we have hoarded your bounty. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us your mercy. Righteous God, we confess that we have sinned, we have failed to be honest, we have lacked the courage to speak, we have spoken falsely. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us your mercy. God is a cup of cold water when we thirst. God offers boundless grace when we fail. Claim the gift of God's mercy. You are freed and forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Beloved and sovereign God, through the death and resurrection of your Son, you bring us into your kingdom of justice and mercy. By your Spirit, give us your wisdom that we may treasure the life that comes from Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. you to be seated and I'm going to invite Linda up to give our kids message. All right guys, when you're hungry, does this look like the most delicious thing to eat? I know you know the answer. It does kind of look like bamboo. I don't think we want to eat bamboo. We're, we're not panda bears. We don't want to eat bamboo, right? It doesn't look very appetizing to eat. And sometimes when we're looking for God, we can't find him easily. But when we dig just a little bit, Tristan, I know you know the answer. What does this turn into? Garlic. So if you dig just a little below the surface, Something can be amazing. Just like sometimes when we dig just a little bit, we may not see it on the surface, but we have all of our God moments that prove God is all around us. And what are we going outside to do today? We're going to go harvest the garlic, maybe some potatoes. And as we take all that food and we're going to give it to the food pantry, we each have the opportunity to help be the hands and feet of Jesus, and to help other people have God moments so that that chain can get even bigger and bigger. Yeah. A little truck? I Yeah, I don't know if a truck would... I don't know if it would fit through the gate, though. That's the only thing. You know what? I think we have a lot of harvesters. Let me see. Let me see those harvesters. I bet you. Yeah. There you go. See, those are our harvesters. My, my, my brother taught, taught, me, taught me this once. Uh, yeah. So sometimes, sometimes we're called to be the hands and feet of Jesus. And today we're going to use our hands, right? Yep, to harvest. All right. Thank you, guys. Good. All right, do we want to take bets on how much they are going to harvest today? All right, go have fun, guys. Go be God's hands and feet and help with creation. Thank you, Linda. A reading from Genesis, the 29th chapter. Laban said to Jacob, because you are my kinsman, should you therefore serve me for nothing? Tell me, what shall your wages be? Now Laban had two daughters. The name of the elder was Leah, and the name of the younger was Rachel. Leah's eyes were lovely, and Rachel was graceful and beautiful. Jacob loved Rachel, so he said, I will serve you seven years for your younger daughter, Rachel. 
Laban said, it is better that I give her to you than I should give her to any other man. Stay with me. So Jacob served seven years for Rachel, and they seemed to him but a few days because of the love he had for her. Then Jacob said to Laban, give me my wife that I may go into her, for my time is completed. So Laban gathered together all the people of the place and made a feast. But in the evening, he took his daughter Leah and brought her to Jacob, and he went into her. Laban gave his maid Zilpah to his daughter Leah to be her maid. When morning came, and it was Leah, and Jacob said to Laban, What is this you have done to me? I did not serve, did I not serve with you for Rachel? Why then have you deceived me? Laban said, This is not done in our country, giving the younger before the firstborn. Complete the week of this one, and we will give you the other also in return for serving me another seven years. Jacob did so and completed her week. Then Laban gave him his daughter, Rachel, as a wife. The word of the Lord. We will read Psalm 105 responsively. Give thanks to the Lord and call upon God's name. Make known the deeds of the Lord among the peoples. Lord, sing praises and speak of all God's marvelous works. Glory in God's holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Search for the strength of the Lord. Continually seek God's faith. Remember the marvels God has done, the wonders and the judgments of God's mouth. O offspring of Abraham, God's servant, O children of Jacob, God's chosen one. The Lord is our God, whose judgments prevail in all the world, who has always mindful of the covenant, the promise made for a thousand generations, the covenant made with Abraham, the oath sworn to Isaac, which God established as a statute for Jacob, an everlasting covenant for Israel, saying, to you I will give the land of Canaan, to be your allotted inheritance. Alleluia. Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus put before the crowds another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed on his field. It is the smallest of all seeds, but when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field, which someone found and hid. Then in his joy, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, they drew it ashore, sat down, and put the good into baskets, but threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of fire where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all of this? They answered, yes. And he said to them, therefore, every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. 
the gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Peace be with you. So we're still following the Old Testament matriarchs and patriarchs. So here's your weekly Sunday quiz. We started with Abraham, and Abraham was given a promise. What was that promise? He would be the father of many nations. And Abraham married a woman named Sarah. And Abraham and Sarah had a son named Isaac. We're getting better at this. And Isaac married a woman named Rebecca. Now Isaac and Rebecca had twins who were named Esau and Jacob. You guys are getting good. Hopefully by the end of the summer, you'll just be able to name off the whole family tree. So we're down to the generation of Jacob and Esau. And in our Old Testament reading today, we see Jacob get married, not once, but twice. What we miss in this particular reading is that Jacob first encounters Rachel at a well, similar to when Isaac encountered Rebekah, or Isaac's steward encountered Rebekah. And Jacob immediately loved her. He said, her, I want to marry her. So he goes to Laban, he works for seven years, and he ends up with Leah. So he works another seven years, and he finally gets to marry Rachel. Now I see a lot of determination and love out of Jacob, but I also have to wonder, working for 14 years? That's either a lot of commitment, or I didn't wake mate my husband wait long enough. <laughs> but here in our scripture today, we see two new matriarchs joining the story. And among all the other things, they are known specifically for building up the house of Israel. Now, Leah is the older sister. She seems to have been overlooked, possibly insecure. Scripture uses the word that she is lovely, Different translations and different theologians think that might mean she might not have been the most perfect looking woman. But Leah ended up being blessed with many children. Then we have Rachel, who was absolutely loved by Jacob. She was hospitable, like Rebecca was. And our text says she was graceful and beautiful. Now, both of these women, Leah and Rachel, are relatives of Rebecca. They come from the same family that Isaac married out of. Both of these women are in competition with each other for Jacob's love. And both of them use others to get what they want. Now, biblical marriage is really weird and complicated. So I always I'm a little cautious when people take the Bible too seriously for today's context, because back then, marriage was all about status and less about love, which is not at all how we view marriage today. One of the things about women in the Bible is that they have power they don't often use. With Rebecca and Leah, we see something new and specific called sister wives or co-wives, which was not uncommon in antiquity. Again, marriage in the Bible has its own thing, different context. Those big families with multiple spouses, they were rather normal for that time. We can also see that in that time, marriage could often have what was called leverate marriage. So if you're brother died, you could marry his wife. Surrogate children, we've already seen those in scripture. All of it was normal. But this idea of sister wives and co-wives, they have a really interesting dynamic. See, when the women are united, they hold the power over their husband. 
Husband says, I want this for dinner. And the wives say, well, no, we're making this two on one. But when they are divided, they hold no power. They are at a disadvantage. And as we see with what happens with Jacob's family, things can get ugly. There is thought that this story is what ultimately led to the banning of marrying sisters in the book of Leviticus to avoid that idea of power struggle. See, if Rachel and Leah had been united in helping God's chosen people, if things had been done properly from the beginning, the story would be completely different and the women would be the ones deciding how everything went. Instead, there's deceit, trickery, and competition. And these themes will influence generation after generation, not just in their own family, but continuing down the line. Rachel and Leah's conflict, we see the beginning of it here, will continue to play out with their children. So we're gonna have, I'm gonna think it's fun, you're probably not, but we're gonna play a little game with Jacob's family tree. Does anyone know how many children Jacob had? 12 plus one. Jacob had 12 boys and one girl that we know of that are named in scripture. So I have a little visual. You're going to have a hard time seeing this. You can see it after. And online, I'll take a picture and post it. Does anyone know the first son's name? This is, this is going to be hard. Reuben, did you see? <laughs> All right, so first up, we've got Reuben. And Reuben is the son of Leah. Anyone know the second son's name? Oh, Mike's going to zoom in. Thanks, buddy. Next up, we have Simeon. Sound familiar? That's not straight. That's okay. Anyone know the third son? Ah, number three is Levi. Let's try to make that a little better. So number three is Levi. Now, if you'll notice, these are color-coded. I'll show them back here, sorry. These are color-coded because so far, all three of these children belong to Leah. Next up, we've got another boy. Anyone have a clue what his name might be? His name is Judah. So now Leah is up to four boys, and those are our kids. So at this point in history, Rachel, Leah's got four boys. Rachel has none. So Rachel hands over her maid servant, Bilhah, proceeds to have a son for her, whose name is Dan. So now we've got four and we've got one. Bilhah proceeds to have another son. Anyone know his name? Mm -mm. His name is Naphtali. Sorry, Eleanor, I keep forgetting. And I am probably going to run out of space. So at this point, now Rachel's evening the score. We've got four for Leah and two for Rachel. Anyone else finding this a little comical? Well, it gets even funnier because now Leah starts getting jealous. And so she hands over her maidservant, Zilpah, who proceeds to have another child for her, whose name is Gad. Then Zilpah has another child, Asher. Sorry, Eleanor. <laughs> so now we're up to eight kids. We've got six for Leah and two for Rachel. So Leah has another child. We get to Issachar. 
And Rachel has another child. We get to Zebulon. As you can see, one of these women clearly has more than the other. And Rachel finally has children. I don't remember who Rachel's children are. Joseph and Benjamin, and I'm officially out of space. Rachel, the beloved wife, finally has two kids that end up being Jacob's absolute favorite. Now somewhere in this line, Leah did also have a girl, Dina. I'm not sure where she falls age order wise. But as you can see, we've got four women involved in this family lineage, bearing children on two opposing sides of the story. Anyone else see how this is a little complicated? Benjamin and Joseph just get to hang out over here. These family dynamics are fascinating because they are based off competition. Leah's got nine children attributed to her, to Rachel's four, but Rachel's two of Joseph and Benjamin are Jacob's favorite out of the 12 to 13, out of the 12 boys. And these children do not get along whatsoever. In fact, Leah's children literally try to kill Joseph. Filling in a little bit of the story that we're gonna miss in the next few weeks. But I really like to call Jacob's family a dysfunctional family in the Bible. Not because of how it is formed, but because of what they do. Let me be clear, blended and mixed families are good and holy and are literally in scripture. But this family is dysfunctional because of the lies, the tricks, and the deceit that they play on each other from generation to generation. It started with Jacob stealing his brother's birthright we see it with Laban tricking Jacob into marrying Leah before Rachel. We'll see it in the next generation with Reuben and Judah trying to sell off Joseph. But the good news and comfort in all of this is that this unique and troubled and unconventional family, God is still working with them. God is still working through them to fulfill God's promises. The family lineage doesn't end and their descendants go on to outnumber the stars just as God promised. The 12 boys become the 12 tribes of Israel that influence all of the scripture that Jesus knew all of the early Christians and continue to influence us today. And also the Jewish people. But in this story, we are reminded that even when we screw up, whether it's intentionally or not, God still loves us. Even when we don't trust God and want to do something ourselves, God still loves us. Over and over again, the Bible shows us imperfect families and parenting gone wrong. Isaac, almost sacrificed his son. Jacob, issues with his brother. Issues with his wives, issues with his children. Mary and Joseph weren't the perfect parents either. They literally lost Jesus for a few days. But God worked through each of them. And God works through each of you. The comfort and challenge in all of this is that we don't always know what God is doing. But we can trust and believe that God is there like digging in the soil as the kids are doing, going a little bit deeper, we know that we can find God. We see the reminder in water too, the reminder of baptism, that God washes away our sin, our shortcomings, our imperfections, our competition, our deceit and our trickery, because nothing can separate you from God's love. And we see the reminder in the bread and wine of communion also, that God knits us together with the Holy Spirit guaranteeing and reminding us of our place in God's family, that God's love and grace are given for you. This is just the beginning of Jacob's fascinating family story. 
We'll get more of Jacob next week, and then we will move into the story of Joseph. I think we skip the selling off and we go right into Egypt. But as you listen from generation to generation, I want you to remember that God is at play with and through each of these people. No matter the good choices they make or the questionable choices. Because even when they mess up, God loves them. And I want you to remember that the same is true for you, that God is always working through you. From generation to generation, even when you mess up, God loves you too. Amen. We profess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. God, who sees and knows all things, who hears our prayers and listens to our cries, we lift these prayers to you out loud and silently in our hearts. God of mercy, we thank you for the resurrection dawn, bringing the glory of our risen Lord who makes every day new. We thank you especially for the sustaining goodness of your creation, for the gifts of healing and forgiveness, 
for the gifts of relationships with others, for the communion of faith in your church. For what else do we thank God? God of grace, King of the God of might, renew this world. world, heal the hurts of all your children, and bring about your peace for all in Christ Jesus, the living Lord. We pray especially for those who govern nations of the world, for the people in countries ravaged by strife or warfare, for all who work for peace and international harmony, for all who strive to save the earth from carelessness and destruction, for the believers of Christ in every land, for those in need of healing and comfort, for whom and what else do we pray? God of grace, we cry out to you and pray for all those in need, knowing that prayer changes lives. For what else do we want to pray to God? God of grace, hear our prayer. God, you have called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the ending, by paths as yet untrodden, through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. You may share a sign of peace with those around you. We give thanks for all the ways that you offer your time, your talents, and your treasures to God. Let us pray our offering prayer together. God of field and forest, sea and sky, you are the giver of all good things. Sustain us with these gifts of your creation and multiply your graciousness in us that the world may be fed with your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
God most mighty, O God most merciful, O God our rock and our salvation, hear us as we praise, call us to your table, grant us your life. When the world was a formless void, you formed order and beauty. When Abraham and Sarah were barren, you sent them a child. When the Israelites were enslaved, you led them to freedom. Ruth faced starvation, David fought Goliath, and the psalmist cried for our healing. And full of compassion, you granted the people your life. You entered our, entered our sorrows in Jesus, our brother. He was born among the poor. He lived under oppression. He wept over the city. With infinite love, he granted the people your life. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, broke it, and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering his death, we cry out. Celebrating his resurrection, we shout. Trusting his presence in every time and place, we plead. O oh God, you are breath. Send your spirit on this meal. O oh God, you are bread. Feed us with yourself. O oh God, you are wine. Warm our hearts and make us one. O oh God, you are fire. Transform us with hope. O oh God, most majestic. O oh God, most motherly. O oh God, our strength and our song. You show us a vision of a tree of life with fruit for all and leaves that heal the nations. Grant us such life that the life of the Father to the Son, the life of the Spirit of our risen Savior, life in you now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the power of the Holy Spirit, we pray as Jesus taught us in whatever language or translation, saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. The body and blood of Christ given for you. body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Amen. We thank you, generous God, for the refreshment we have received at your banquet table. 
Send us now to spread your generosity into all the world through the one who is our dearest treasure, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Receive this blessing. The God who calls across the cosmos and speaks into the smallest seed. Bless, keep, and sustain you now and to the end of the age. Amen. Amen. be seated for a few brief announcements. Just a reminder, we are continuing to collect men's, women's, and children's clothing and shoes. Uh, we had one delivery already taken over. That picture's on Facebook if you want to go see. Um, thank you to everyone who's already donated. Uh, also, Thursday, we have Bible study here on site. It'll also be online. Uh, and it's time to pull our hymn lotto. I thought I saw the children, but I don't see anybody moving. Anyone want to pull it for us? Amy. <laughs> I thoroughly enjoy this every week. <laughs> no, not that one. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Ooh, shout to the Lord. Oh, that's yours. <laughs> uh-oh, 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 is that foul play? Next week, we'll do Shout to the Lord. <laughs> uh, it'll be next week. <laughs> I know, Arnie, it's hard to change. <laughs> but because we do it this way, we got to sing this fun new song, which was new to me. That was a good, that was a good yeah, one, right? I agree. That was great. That was a fun one. We're gonna put that in rotation. Well, good thing we know who to talk to, how to do that. Yes, exactly. Uh, one last tiny thing, as always, if there's music that you want Bob and I to know about, please make sure you let us know. Um, and also, it was really lovely having Linda do the kids' sermon today. So if anyone ever feels called to do it, please let me know. I know you're laughing like, no, never me. Um, but also, if you have an idea uh, that you're like, wow, this would be great, but I don't want to do it, feel free to let me know, too, because I don't always come up with them until like five minutes before church. So sometimes you guys have great ideas. That being said, go in peace to share the harvest of our garlic. Thanks be to God.
favorite song, isn't it? I don't know, but it was, it was actually like one that I wasn't aware of. 